Got dreams of being a professional podcaster, but have no idea what you're doing? This is impossible. That's about to change. A new kind of school. Welcome to the Pod School Podcast. Hello there. Well, it has been a long time between audio drinks, has it not? But here I am, because something really interesting has happened in the podcasting world, and I wanted to do an episode about it, and that is that you can now submit your podcast to YouTube via an RSS feed. So Google recently announced that they would be shutting down Google Podcasts, which is a bit disappointing for a lot of people because a lot of people really love that app. Uh, But unfortunately, it is going to the Great Podcast Graveyard. There are quite a few things (laughs) in the Great Podcast Graveyard. But now Google wants to focus on YouTube Music and YouTube Main rather than Google Podcasts. So they will be shutting that app down. We don't have an exact date on when that will happen. But you can now upload your podcast into YouTube. You couldn't do it in Australia for a long time. It was um, able to be done in America. But now you can actually do that. And I went to a conference recently where we were talked through the process and exactly what the plans are from YouTube. And I just wanted to kind of update you a little bit about that if you're thinking, do I need to get my podcast on YouTube? And if you've been a little bit like me, which is I have been thinking about doing my podcast on YouTube, but the popular opinion and certainly the opinion out of YouTube for a long time was if you're just going to do sort of a static image of your artwork and have the audio there, that's not a really good YouTube experience. And I did not have the time nor the inclination to kind of make videos around my podcast, particularly because I'd recorded a lot of audio and the options then are to maybe animate something or create something uh, a bit more compelling than just an image. I also wasn't filming my episodes, so I didn't have footage of those episodes to put up there. So I was kind of wondering, what the heck do I do with YouTube? It just doesn't seem to work for me. And I know that a lot of podcasters who didn't have the capability to do video felt the same way. But now that you can upload the RSS feed, and interestingly, what that does is generate a video that has an image of your logo and audio, which is exactly what we weren't supposed to do for ages. But now you can upload it that way. And I guess if that is the kind of norm, it's going to be more accepted on YouTube. You can actually upload your show without needing to create videos, which is really, really helpful. And what YouTube are trying to do is create kind of a seamless experience across their main page and also YouTube music, which will act a bit more like a podcatcher. They are adding features at the moment to make it more like an experience in a podcatcher. It's not going to be a podcatcher. But the interesting thing that I found at the conference was that they were talking about if you listen to a podcast or view a podcast on YouTube main and then you jump into the YouTube music app, they have created in the back end an experience where it will basically pick up exactly where you left off. So it will seamlessly go from one to the other, which is really exciting. So this has happened because not only are pretty much all companies thinking about what their audio strategy is, particularly a platform like YouTube, but also because over the last few years, a huge number of people are consuming podcasts on YouTube. And that's mostly shows that are filmed. And naturally, that is just not a possibility for most podcasters. If you want to create a video podcast, and I have to just put a little caveat in here, I'm not 100% sure about this video podcast term. For me, I feel like a podcast is audio. And then a video podcast, it's just sort of getting to the point where it's just video. What makes it a video podcast? If somebody's got a microphone in front of them, like if you're watching a YouTube video of a podcast being recorded, is that a video podcast or is that just a video of a podcast? I'll leave that for you to ponder. But basically, the workflow that you need to do if you are going to upload audio in the back end of your podcast host, but you're also going to have the video aspect of your show is completely different to how most podcasters operate. Even the podcasts that I look after in networks, we edit the audio and of course we have a video component, but we use those videos as social promotion. So we will cut little snippets and clips and we'll share those out on social media to point people to the audio. The reason that we do it that way is because we might record 40 minutes in a studio and we're only putting 25 to 30 minutes of that out on our podcast. Now we're not going to put the full unedited version of the video out online because we are editing that show to make sure that the best bits are the bits that go out to the audience. And if we wanted to create a video version of that, the easiest way to do that would be to take the video, edit the video, get the video to the point where we like it, and then export the audio from that point. But then you'd still have to listen to the audio because there are things that would work visually that might not work if you haven't got the vision associated with it. That just increases your workflow immensely. So for a lot of people, YouTube 
wasn't a possibility because of that. Also not having the skills. Video is an entirely separate skill set to audio. You also have to worry about what you look like, what your background looks like, what your lighting is, all of those kind of things that can really complicate things. The other thing that was an issue was that your views on YouTube did not come into your dashboard for your podcast host. That was an entirely separate thing. So it wasn't like it was adding to your downloads unless you had your little spreadsheet and you're adding everything together manually. And even then, a view does not count as a listen the same way that a listen does in the back of end of a podcast host. So that sort of separation was really difficult. The other thing is you can't monetize it. You would need a lot of views on YouTube to be able to monetize that channel. And if you were selling ads in your podcast, those ads don't pull through to YouTube. So that's an issue for anybody monetizing their show, which is usually more of a problem for networks than it is necessarily for individuals. And obviously, as I mentioned, the idea of putting up an image was not best practice previously. So that was kind of the only option for a lot of people who didn't have the capability to make video. Now, this ability to upload your RSS feed solves a lot of those problems, not all of them, but it does mean that you can simply upload your podcast to YouTube. It will generate a video, a version of your logo, and then the audio attached, and people can listen on the platform. And it will be interesting to see how this changes behavior for people who are traditionally in YouTube, whether they go to those videos and it doesn't really matter if they don't have anything kind of visually except for a logo on it, and if that increases your audience. The thing to note, though, is it's about incremental audience growth. So YouTube is saying that people who do really well on YouTube, if they start putting their content up on YouTube, it doesn't impact their numbers for people listening on other platforms. So it's not about taking people away from your other platforms. It's about distributing your content in a new place where people who might just love YouTube and aren't going to go and listen to your podcast in Spotify might listen to it in YouTube. So it's really about growing your audience. Audio is really hard when it comes to discoverability, finding new shows. We're still in that kind of world where, I mean, the charts and those kind of things are really good. But for most people, they find out about podcasts through recommendation and word of mouth. And that is slow in terms of growth. So what YouTube really want to do is to increase the amount of discoverability for podcasts on their platform. So in things like the homepage and watch next, they want to surface more podcast content to get people to watch more podcasts. Now, I would imagine that the podcast content they were surfacing would mostly be the stuff that is filmed because obviously looking at an image of your podcast logo is not as exciting as looking at a bunch of people sitting around a desk talking about something on their podcast. But the fact that they want to use the platform to surface more content means this could be really great for you in terms of increasing your audience. The other interesting thing is that if you upload your RSS feed and you have a podcast within YouTube, you can also create inside Creator Studio a playlist of videos. And the thing about podcasts within YouTube is that they play out like a playlist. So you can actually create videos maybe of some of your episodes and link those things together so that some of the episodes could be audio with an image of your logo and some of the episodes could be video. YouTube suggests that you don't kind of mix any other content into these playlists. So it should play out exactly like your audio podcast would play out in terms of episodes rolling out one by one. It shouldn't be an episode and then a couple of clips from that episode and then a video version of that episode. It should really be if you are going to mix the two, then you would set the audio version to private if you had a video version of that episode and kind of space those in between so that it plays out exactly like the episodes would roll out in a podcatcher and it can feel like a podcast experience as opposed to, oh, hang on, a second, I just listened to this episode and now I'm getting a video of a clip from this episode. Like, why is this happening? So you want to make sure that that is really a seamless experience for your audience. A few of the limitations, naturally, the analytics are still separate. So it won't feed into that overall downloads number. And the reason for that is at this stage, the IAB do not see a view as a download. So the way that downloads count within podcast apps, if they are IAB compliant, is you have to download 60 seconds of audio for it to register as a download in the back end. Now, I would argue that if you've watched 60 seconds of video, you've probably listened to 60 seconds of audio. But at the moment, that is not seen as the same thing. So they do not aggregate those numbers into the one download number. I think probably it will 
move to that eventually. And I think that's something as an industry, certainly uh, working in a network, I think that's something that we could probably, if we're going to all kind of get our shows on, on YouTube, we could talk to the IAB about adjusting that because it would be best for us to have all of those numbers in one rather than having those numbers separated out. But that is a limitation at this stage. Ads also, as I mentioned, they don't pull through. So if you sell ads on your content, they're not going to pull through to YouTube. At the moment, you can't sell ads on your YouTube channel if you're getting views. I mean, you'd have to be getting a lot of views to make that lucrative, but that's probably more of a problem for a network more than an individual. In fact, that splitting out of downloads and views as separate things is probably not going to kind of mesh into one until you can commercialize the downloads that you have on YouTube or the views that you have on YouTube, because especially from a network perspective, that number of downloads is kind of what you take to sell when you're commercializing your network. And if you've got a whole bunch of views in there that you can't actually commercialize, well, then you're kind of going out with a number that has a bunch of listens or views in it that aren't really able to be accessed by an advertiser. So hmm, it's all very complicated at the moment. I'm not sure how it's all going to roll out, but here's me just live spitballing thoughts (laughs) as they pop into my head. The other thing to note is you also might not see a huge amount of uptake on your YouTube views and that might not matter very much. I think some shows, you know, who have a huge amount of audience, even when they're filming their episodes, often see that the episode's that are on YouTube do not do nearly as well as the episodes that are audio only. And then they kind of have this weird thing where they've got people in the comments going, why has this got no views? And there's a thought of like, oh, does this actually make the content look worse? Because actually we're getting heaps of listens on our podcast app. So there might not be a huge amount of audience there and it might be a bit more of a long-term play. So I don't think it's necessarily the kind of thing where you're going to double your audience in five seconds. And you might find that your channel gets a like really small amount of numbers and And YouTube has kind of had a bit of feedback around the view count on podcast episodes and they've kind of heard the feedback, but obviously view count is one of those social proof metrics in the platform that they find really helpful um, and that they want to keep. But from a podcast perspective, there are people that are saying, hey, my podcast actually does really well and then it looks like it does really badly on YouTube. So is there any way that we could adjust that view count? That's something that's kind of being debated at the moment, but you might not get a huge amount of people listening to your podcast online, particularly if you've only got that image of your logo, but I really think it's worth Worth the experiment just to see what you've got. You can always take it down, but having that just ticking away is not going to harm you in any way if you're an independent creator. Some of the benefits obviously is being able to upload your RSS and be on YouTube if you don't have capacity or the skills to make video. That makes things so much easier. And then, you know, is it going to be successful? Who knows? It's worth giving it a shot. Discoverability, as I mentioned, you know, they're really keen to surface new content. But again, I think that content will probably be the video first content. But who knows? You know, you might see real success even if you've got an audio only version of your show uploaded to YouTube. YouTube are also working on some more generative AI tools behind the scenes that could help make the process easier for podcasters. So that's kind of exciting. You can also put chapter markers in your YouTube content. So you might have seen this in videos that you're watching where if you scroll through, it actually shows you what topic is being covered at what spot in the video. So that can be something good if you're talking about a bunch of different things, then your audience can kind of go, oh, I'm interested in that and just listen to that. So that can be a, a good experience for your audience. And obviously you can also use all of the other video capabilities within YouTube to try and promote your podcast. So clips and shorts to try and create short little pieces of really engaging content. And you don't just want that to be you going, hey, listen to my podcast. That needs to be a standalone piece of valuable content. But if people really like watching that, then they might check out your audio on your podcast. So those can be really good tools as well for you to promote your podcast on a platform where you're not having to say, hey, now that you've watched this video and you've loved that, maybe click out to a podcatcher and find my show in that podcast app and then listen to it there, you can actually point people to it in YouTube. So that's a really good way to get people to listen without having to get them to move to another app because we all know if you're asking people to do anything that involves leaving the platform that they are on, then the chances are they're not going to do it. So I think at this stage, we're kind of a bit unsure about what the impact of this is going to be. Also unsure if in five years time, it's still around because often platforms step into audio and podcasting and then after a while, they're like, hang on, 
a minute. This is not as lucrative as we thought it was, or this hasn't worked the way that it, it, we thought it would. Obviously, Google Podcasts is an example of that, but this is the same company. So it makes sense that they would concentrate their efforts on one platform. But I think it's really exciting if you are an independent creator to give it a crack. It means that you can simply upload your show to YouTube. You can see what it does. You can see if it increases your discoverability. Know that it's not going to add into your download number in the back end of your podcast host, but that doesn't mean that those views don't count and you can't add that into your total number, even if it's not technically uh, seen as a download at this stage. So I really think if you're an independent podcaster, you should give it a crack. As a network, it's a much more complicated decision, I think, because obviously monetization and commercializing content is the main driver of all networks. And if that content can't be commercialized, then it's a tougher question about whether it is worth the effort. But if you are doing your podcast in your lounge room, not making money out of it, just wanting more people to discover it, I think it's a no brainer. So definitely, definitely check it out. I will pop a link in the show notes to where you can find a bit more information in YouTube support pages. I'm also going to drop a link to a Google form. And um, I mean, that's so on brand for this episode, right? Because I want to bring this show back next year, but I want it to focus on your questions. So I obviously have so many episodes in this show and also on my website. So there are a lot of episodes you can check out here that I might have answered your question already. So make sure you go through and and see that. But if you have got a question and I haven't answered it, then just click on the link in the show notes and submit your question. And I'll be collating all of those next year and um, hopefully bringing back the show early in 2024. So thanks so much for joining me for this episode. I hope you give YouTube a try with your podcast. I hope you see results. If you do, let me know. I'm really interested to see where this goes and what the impact is for the industry and for especially independent podcast creators, because I think that's probably where the most value at this stage is going to be. So thanks so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next episode. That's all for today. 